Hey guys, this is Hemant from Indireka. Welcome to this session on what are selectors in UiPath. Today in this session, we are going to see what are selectors exactly and why do we need them in UiPath. All right. So without wasting any time, let's move on to the agenda to see what all we'll be covering in today's session. So we'll start this session by first discussing what are selectors and then we'll see why do we need selectors in UiPath. After that, we'll see how to use selectors in UiPath and ending our session with a hands-on. Right, so today's session is going to be a quick one, but we are going to know a very important topic in the UiPath Studio, which is selectors, which is going to help you in doing a lot of automations in your day-to-day -day life. All right, so without wasting any time, let's start with the first topic of today's discussion, which is what are selectors. So guys, selectors are nothing but basically a plain text which is used to uniquely identify an element on the screen. For example, if I am to talk about this particular image that you can currently see, as a human, I would say, you know, this is an image which has gray outlines and it has an arrow which is of a semi-gray color, right? It's on the right side of the screen and it is aligned in the middle of the presentation. So this is the way another person who would like to recognize this particular object on the screen. Now imagine it telling it to a computer. So if you were to tell it to a computer, you would do that using plain text or code, right? And you would tell them, uh, for example, if you want to identify an element for a website, let's say for Edureka, there is this element which is a search box on the website, right? Now if I were to identify this particular element on the screen if I want to tell the computer that this is the element that you have to identify let's see how the computer would look into it or how the computer would actually identify this particular element the most generic way of you know identifying elements on a screen is by noting its pixel coordinates down right so once you have the pixel coordinates you know where exactly to look for uh, that particular element on the screen and you can easily identify the element there. The other way for your computer to identify it is by looking at the URL it is pointing to. For example, if you were to search anything inside the search box, it will always point to uh, something like edureka.co slash search slash the search term that is searching for. So it will always have this particular URL attached to it, right? So you can easily identify the element on the screen by identifying the URL with which it is assigned to. The next way you can identify this particular element is by the CSS, all right? So you can look at the CSS of the search box and you can say, okay, so this particular way, any element that is looking this particular way is what is to be selected or is what my target element is, all right? So these are all selectors. These are all uh, you know, ways of identifying elements on the screen of a computer and they are called selectors, all right? Now, the question that you might be asking yourself is, why do we need selectors in UiPath? So you might be wondering, this is a UiPath session. Why are we learning about selectors? All right, so let me explain you how. Let me explain you why. So you need selectors uh, because sometimes the content that you're trying to access or the content you're trying to automate is not static. All right, for example, websites. So websites are not static. Everything changes on every page right if the whole page is being reloaded right for example this particular website on this particular website you will see that the URL of the page changes every time I click on next all right also the element like for example what I want to do on this particular website is I want to identify this particular image all right so whenever I click on next the properties of this image will change or the properties of this image box will change it will now point to this particular image which might have a different source origin, it might have a different name, it might have different dimensions and all of that. All right, so everything changes whenever I'm changing the web page. And I want to solve this and I want to automate this part wherein I can easily identify the image, the main image on the screen. All right, so if I were to do that, I would use selectors because using selectors, I can tell you a path that these are the properties that I want to focus on and these are the properties that I don't want to focus on. For example, since the name is changing on every web page that I'm getting or I'm pressing next to, I can ignore the name property of this particular image. I can maybe uh, 
import or I can maybe use some other property which is not changing throughout the website you know irrespective of whether I'm clicking on next or not so our aim is using selectors we have to select the properties which will never change on each and every page right so this is the motive of using selectors in UiPath now how can you actually use these selectors in UiPath if you were to do or if you were to analyze the selectors of a particular element how you can do that using UiPath so let's share a light in that so in UiPath you must have noticed this ribbon which is there on the top of the screen and you must have noticed this particular tool inside UiPath studio which is called launch UI Explorer now this is where all the magic happens guys this is where you can see all the selectors that your UiPath will be identifying or will be fetching to basically identify that particular element on the screen so let me quickly jump to my tool so that I can show you what I basically mean so this is the ribbon that I was talking about guys and this is the tool this is the magic tool that our video is based on today so if you want to analyze a particular element on the screen you simply just have to click on launch UI Explorer all right which will give you this particular screen now if I want to identify or if I want to analyze say the run icon on the UI path studio let's see how I can select or how I can list the selectors for this particular element so you will click on this particular icon which says select target element I'll click there and then I'll select or I'll hover on the element which I want to identify using selectors so say I want to identify the run icon on UiPath Studio I click on run right and then it will give me all the selectors which are related to that particular element now the way selectors work guys is like this now I understand most of you guys must be from non programming backgrounds and I don't want to scare you with the code right so it is very easy to understand if you try to see what is happening so the way this particular icon has been recognized is like this so the first line which comes in selectors is basically the window which will have that particular element so if you look at it it is looking for a window whose title is ui studio.exe which is basically this so this is the window which is being uh, you know recognized in the whole of the desktop or in the whole of the screen once it finds ui studio.exe window it will look for the title which is UI Path Studio community hyphen selector so as you can see it is matching this title so if all these things match it has successfully identified the window once it identifies the window it will go into the ribbon so as you can see the ID of that particular element is ribbon so this is the ribbon for your particular element right inside the ribbon there is one more ID which is called part underscore tab strip so basically it would point to this particular space on the ribbon and then so on and so forth in the end it will have the run button right and this is how you will reach the run button or this is how your UI path studio is recognizing the run button it is taking a top-down approach it starts from the window drills down into the components and then gets that particular element right so these are the selectors guys this is how you can identify selectors for a particular element on the screen now moving on this was a very general example this was just to teach you how you can identify the selectors in UI path now let's move on to the hands-on part wherein we'll be actually seeing which exact places will use selectors to solve them all right so let's look at the problem statement so let's take the example forward that we took before right so this is a website which basically gives you nice quotes on images right now I like the images guys so I want all these images or I want a particular number of images to be downloaded from this site automatically right so if you were to do it as a human if you were to do it you would basically right click on the image save image as and then give the name and you know save it in a particular folder that you want now say I want around 50 images from this particular website so if I were to do so it would be a very cumbersome task for me and I want to solve that right so if I were to solve that I would be using UiPath Studio and in the UiPath Studio I'll be designing the automation for this particular demonstration so let's see how we can do that so let me go to my tool all right so guys this is the tool where you will be or this is the area where you will be designing your automation 
So the first thing that you need to have is a sequence. So you need to have a sequence of steps. So let me type in sequence. All right. So the first thing that you need is a sequence of steps, right? The first thing that I need to have in my uh, workspace area is a sequence. So let me drag and drop the sequence over here. So I have a sequence now. Inside the sequence, I'll have a series of steps that I want to execute one by one. So the first thing that I want to do is go to this particular website, which is having the quotes for me, right? So this is the website that I want to go to. Let me tell my UiPath Studio how to go to this particular website. So basically, I have to open a browser and inside that browser, I have to go to this particular link. So let me copy the link from here and paste it inside the URL bar. All right. So once I have the URL bar, now my sequence, the first thing that it will do is it will open a browser and it will go to this particular link. Now, which browser do I want it to open? I want it to open me Chrome. All right, so I'll select Chrome from the browser type of properties of this particular element. Next, that I wanted, what I want my UI paths to do is take a screenshot of this particular image. All right, so what I'll do is I'll simply write take screenshot. Right, I'll get this element or I'll get this activity. I'll drag and drop it here. And now I have to tell the take screenshot activity what exact thing do I want the screenshot of, right? So now I'll click on indicate element inside browser. So once I click here, I have to specify which image do I want the screenshot of. So for example, I want this main image to have the screenshot, right? So I click on it and the screenshot is taken. Next, what I want to do is once I've taken the screenshot, I will click on next. I'll go to the other page and I'll take the screenshot again and do it as many times as I want, right? So the next thing that I want to do is click on next. So I'll type in click. I'll drag and drop it here. Indicate the element inside browser, which is here. And that is it, right? So now my UI path studio knows that I have to take a screenshot of the image. And once I take a screenshot, I have to click on next and do it again. Now I want the input from the user as in how many images do I want, right? So the UI path should understand that say I want 10 images so it should have an interface to interact with me so that interface is basically input dialog all right so we'll type in input and you'll have this activity over here just simply drag and drop it here it's very simple and specify what all details do you want your dialog to display to you so I'll tell my dialog to tell me that enter the details or enter how many images do you want to download all right so I've specified that now whatever entry or whatever number I'll be putting it in this particular input dialog has to be stored somewhere, right? So I'll be specifying a variable here, which could be say num, right? All right. So now whatever I'm entering over here or whatever values I'm entering into the input dialog is being stored in a variable called num. Now guys, there is two ways to declare a variable. One way of doing it is by clicking on variables and clicking on create variable and then specifying the name of your variable and then selecting the type of your variable, right? The other way to create your variables is like this. So, you know, if I want to delete this variable, I'll just delete it. Say I want to declare a variable over here. So I'll just simply hit control K and once I've hit control K, I can specify what variable do I want my UI path to store over here. It's very simple. So once I've specified these variable where my value will be stored, the next thing that I want my computer to do or my I want my UI path robot to do is take the screenshots. So basically I've told my uh, UI path robot to take the screenshot and hit on next, right? But once I do that, I'll also have to save that image in a particular location. So I haven't specified that. So to do that, I will simply say save image over here and drag and drop the activity here. All right. So if it's taking a screenshot, where is it storing? I have to define a variable for that as well. So I simply hit control K. I'll specify the variable name as image. It will automatically identify where or you know what type of variable type has to be assigned to this variable. So once it does that, it will store that image in this particular variable 
and I want to save this variable or I want to convert this variable into file. So my save image activity will help me doing that. So first I have to specify the variable over here in the first tab and then the location where I want my selector to be or where I want my image to be saved. So for that, let me say I want my images to be stored inside the pictures library and say I create a new folder here with the title images. All right. So I want my images to come here. So what I'll do is I'll simply copy the address from here and save it over here. All right. Now I'll specify the name of the uh, file that I want to save. So say it will be image.png. Cool. Seems fine, right? Now I want to do this process again and again till my number of images that I've specified here is met. So to do that, I'll have to run a loop. Now there's a loop in UiPath called do while, which basically means that you will do something while that condition is true, right? So let me drag and drop it here. So while this condition is true, it will execute a small or a sequence of steps until the specified condition is true. All right. So what will be the condition? So the condition should basically mean that there will be a variable. Say I create a variable called val, which would basically be an integer. And this integer till the time it is less than num, that is the number of images that I have provided, it should keep on taking screenshots and once the number of screenshots reach the number of images that I wanted it will come out of the loop. So basically my condition should be val should be lesser than num. All right. Now my num is basically a generic value in a variable. So I have to convert it into integer so that it can be compared with val. Right. So the way to convert your variable into integer is C I N T and then brackets, which basically means convert this particular variable into integer. All right. So once it is converted into integer, it can be compared with another integer and you know it can be termed as a condition. Now, while this statement is true, I want to execute these set of steps. So let me copy these set of steps and paste it inside my for loop all right so let me copy these steps all right and paste it here inside the for loop and my for loop will basically go inside the do component of my browser so whenever my browser will open it will basically execute a loop which will execute until my number of images have been taken or the number of images have been downloaded all right uh, so now as I can see it is taking a screenshot it is saving the image and then it is clicking next Right now the only one part is left that whenever you're doing these kind of automation or whenever you're doing this kind of automation You are dependent on the website, right? So the website should be loaded fully So let's give a delay over here, which will basically give our website the time to load properly All right, so let's drag and drop an activity here called delay. I hope you guys understand why I'm adding delay because say I, I go to this particular website and hit on refresh, right? So now it's taking some time to load. So my computer should give this much time to my machine to load the web page so that it does not give me an error that the element has not been found. For example, it clicks on next. Now my website is taking time to you know reload and there is nothing on the screen. And my UI path may go crazy that I cannot find the element that you have specified. So to avoid that, we will use the delay statement, which will basically delay or will basically before going to the next iteration of taking the screenshot, it will wait for three seconds for the website to load. All right. So let's specify the time over here for which it should wait. So the duration should be three seconds. So let is configure it to be three seconds which would be like this all right so now my sequence will wait for three seconds before going on to the next iteration also i would want my val integer to be incremented because only then it'll you know there'll be a stage when val and num will be comparable or when they'll be equal 
So what I'll do is I will again search for an activity called assign, right? I'll drag and drop the assign activity here and let me increment my val by val plus one. I hope you understand this because my condition is that until and unless my val is less than my num variable, this particular loop has to be executed. For example, I want around three images to be downloaded. So my num variables value becomes three, right? And my val, you know, its default value, let's specify it here, would be zero, right? So my val's value is zero and my num's value is three. So it will go to this iteration, it will take a screenshot, it will come here and the, it will assign the value of val to be plus one, which is so now it was zero before, now it becomes one, right? It again checks the condition, one is less than three. It'll again go, take one more screenshot, come over here, you know, increment the value of val by one. So now it's two. If it'll again compare, so two is less than three, again do the iteration, so then it becomes three. And since three is less than three is false, it'll come out of the loop and end the program. So basically you get and uh, you end up with three screenshots, which are the ones that you want, right? So I think this activity is complete now. Now let me show you how this particular program will run. So obviously this program will not be able to run because at every time the click image or the click button is pressed, every element on the screen changes, all right? So um, let us see what we get right now. So let's hit on run. So if I hit on run, this is the input dialog that I was talking about. So it will ask me how many images do I want to download. So let me quickly close this tab so that there's no confusion and click hit three. Three is the number that I want. So I'll click on OK. So this will basically open browser. So now it is trying to identify the image on the page and it's hitting next. But the thing over here is it can only hit it once. Right, it cannot identify the image again because everything of this particular web page has changed. Right, the text of that image is changed, and maybe the source of that image has changed as well. So now it is not able to identify the image on the screen, and hence you see that it is not automating or it is not doing anything anymore. Right, so uh, it'll take a few seconds, it'll keep on trying, and then it'll hit you, give you an error that it is not able to find the UI element corresponding to the selector. Right, so this is the error that you are getting when you're trying to solve it. So let me quickly fix one thing, which is uh, you know, I want my Chrome browser to open, so I've selected Chrome now. So whenever I'll be doing, I'll be running this project now, my Chrome browser will open. I don't want IE. All right. So now let us configure uh, how or let us see how we can actually templatize this particular image that we had, right? Or how we can identify this particular image irrespective of what page we are on or irrespective of what quotation image it is there, right? So to do that, we have to go into selectors. So the way you can select or you can see the selectors for this particular image or that particular image container on that website is going to target, right? And hitting and, you know, selecting the selector option over here, which is this. So as you can see, the current selector of this element is including the name of the image as well. So guys, this is where the problem is, right? Whenever we're clicking next, on the web page, a new image is coming in and this name changes and it is no longer able to match this particular name to that image, right? And that is why we are getting an error. So let's see how we can fix it. So basically now what I'll be doing is I'll be clicking on launch UI Explorer. So it is asking me to indicate an element on the screen. So let me hit escape right now to cancel the selection and let me open the web page where my image was. So basically I want to templatize this particular container which will have the image. So whenever whichever page I am on, I want a screenshot of whatever is there inside this particular image container, right? So let's see how we can fix that. So I will click on Open UI Explorer and let me indicate that this is the element where I am wanting the selectors to be of, all right? So it will open the UI path explorer and as you can see, this is the selector that we want to be changed. All right, so let me 
quickly select the target element again so that I get the original selectors for my image. So these are the original selectors which will give me a top-down approach from the browser till the element that I'm trying to target. Now as you can see even the browser has a title which is something like this which is based on the image that it is showing. Right. So this is again uh, not good for me because every time I hit next this title is changing. All right, so I don't want this title. Now, this is a new thing that you'll be learning, guys. That whenever you are saying that whatever the title be or whatever a particular element be, do this, right? So that anything that placeholder for anything which can come into the existence is called star. For example, in this particular case, I'm saying whatever in the Chrome browser, whatever the title be, search for this particular element. All right. The other way to say this could be or let me give you some clarity on you know what I'm trying to explain. If I go to this particular browser you can see that there is a quote over here and after that brainy quote is being written. All right. So let's see if it is same on the next page as well. I'll hit next and if I see the title now I'll again see that the quote has been changed. But what not has changed is the end statement of the title which is hyphen brainy quote. Alright, so if I come back to my selectors, I'll come back to the title section of my selectors. I'll say star space hyphen space brainy quote, which basically means anything can be before this particular, uh, you know, word which is brainy quote. I'm not bothered with that, but the title should always end with hyphen brainy quote. Alright, so this is the significance of star over here. This is what the star is basically mean. It's a placeholder for anything. It could be anything that is being filled before hyphen brainy code, right? So now how it is identifying this particular element is so any HTML page which is you know in the Chrome browser, if it's having a title in which in the end it's hyphen brainy code, go inside that particular tab, right? So this seems to be fixed. We can also further strengthen it by giving the URL as well. So I can give the URL for that tab as well over here. And if you see the URL guys, so let's try to see if the URL is changing or not. So if I hit next, I can see that this particular section of the URL is always same and this particular section of the URL is changing. All right. So what I do is I'll copy this section of the URL, go to my tool and specify the URL here and say star after that which basically means anything which is before star is this and anything after this could be anything right anything after this is I'm not bothered about it but the start of the URL should be something like this and if it is like this go inside that particular tab right now you can validate whether it is still able to identify the element on the screen by hitting this validate selector. So right now as you can see the image has changed right. So let me hit back right and let me see if this is the same image that my selector is pointing to. All right. So I feel this is the same. So it says there is only one happiness in this life and it's also said there's only one happiness in this life. So right now if I hit on validate selector it should tell me whether it is pointing to this image or not. So I'll hit validate selector. It is pointing to this particular image. All right. But the moment I click on next and if I go to my UI path selector now and I say validate selector, it will say it will cannot find the UI object for the selector that I have provided because now this particular image of this browser is having a different name, right? So we have to fix that. So again, since the name is changing at every page, I would not want the name property to be included when I'm trying to identify an element, right? So let us see what all other things I have over here which I can actually use. So the title I cannot use because again the title will change. The source I cannot use because the source of the image will change as the image changes, right? The parent class I can consider. The class of the file I can consider. The class of the image container. This is basically the class of the image container which is there. And I think this will do good. If we select this as our selector, I think it will be able to recognize that element on the screen. Let's see if we are right or wrong. So we will click on validate selector. 
the current selector points when you are different than one you have selected that is fine because previously we had some other image so this warning basically tells us that now we are being pointed to some other element right so to fix this what we can do is we can go back to the image that was originally the source for the selector that we have modified and click on validate selector so yes the current selector is valid for this selector as well which we have just modified so i think this selector should work or is working right if i click on next now and again validate the selector it says the current selector is valid if i again change the web page and i click on valid selector it again can validate the image container that i have templatized using selectors so this code now is usable i can copy this code and i can close this and i can paste it over here so now my image container has been templatized so on every page it can identify the main image right so this is why selectors are important guys now again if i scroll down a bit and i see the click button this again can be a problem but for now let's try to run it and see if we need to implement selectors in button as well so we'll hit run let's let us close this tab and let's enter say i want around four images and i'll hit okay okay so my chrome browser has opened so now it has seen my website and as you can see it is waiting for three seconds and then clicking on next taking the screenshot and all right so our automation works so now the one thing that i forgot to do over here is change the image so if i were to see how many images i have in my folder it's only going to show one because every time that it is trying to save an image it is saving it by the same name that is image.png so i have to fix this now so to fix this i can do a simple math problem which is basically something like this so i can add a number in front of the image name so what number so what better than our own variable that is val right so that val has to be converted to string if i'm trying to store it as a name so let's enter the val variable over here and now save the project all right so now let's try to run our program and see if we are getting different files so it'll ask me the number of images that i want to download i'll say around five images Let's hit OK. We'll go to the page. It has saved one file. Save the second file. Save the third file. The fourth file, and then the last image after this. And once it has finished the automation, it will close the browser, and it will return to my UiPath Studio. So let's see if I have five images in my folder now. So yes, I have around five images. So let's check if these images, I can see these images. So yes, I have successfully automated this particular website by templatizing the objects that are there on this particular website using selectors, right? So with that guys, congratulations on your first project on selectors. So I hope you guys have learned something new. And basically this opens a lot of scope in terms of automation. You can just think about automating something and using selectors, you can do that. It is a very powerful thing that UiPath has uh, given to us and we can basically implement it on any website that is there on the web, all right? So with that guys, I would like to conclude today's session. So thank you guys for attending today's session.